Welcome to the Ocean Star Drilling Rig and Museum. This rig is representative of the very beginning of a long process that brings oil and gas from the depths of the earth to your gas tank. Oil and gas products affect nearly all phases of our lives, and you can find them almost anywhere you look. In your kitchen, garage, or playroom, your grocery or hospital, on roads and highways, and in cars, boats, and airplanes. From the plastics and kitchen utensils, toys, and airplane seats, to fabrics and diapers, reusable grocery bags, and disposable surgical gowns, to the oil, gas, and other distillates used to clean and operate all types of motors and equipment, every part of our lives is enhanced by thousands of products from petroleum. In fact, even the energy that provides electricity to run this video and lighting for your home and office comes from refined oil and natural gas. And you may not realize this, but the oil and gas industry is one of the most high-tech industries in the world. The industry must constantly develop and refine technology under increasingly challenging conditions to meet the growing demand for oil and gas. The industry strives to meet demand through exploration, drilling, production, and refining all necessary to bring oil and gas to our lives by means of the most advanced technology developed by creative, forward-thinking engineers with appropriate attention given to safety and the unique ecosystems of land and ocean. Deep below the Earth's surface and the ocean floor, Earth's natural heat and pressure convert organic sediment from ancient animals and plants buried there into hydrocarbons, droplets of oil or molecules of gas. This subsurface oil and gas is under constant pressure and is eventually squeezed from its original source to begin the migration upwards. Often, hydrocarbons collect together beneath the Earth's surface to form masses of oil and gas, which sometimes become reservoirs, abundant sources of important energy. Offshore drilling began in the 1930s using rickety wooden pilings in shallow waters near Venezuela and in the Caspian Sea. Rig design and technology has increased by leaps and bounds since then as the offshore industry has grown. Few important milestones include 1947, when Kerr McGee drilled the first offshore well that could not be seen from the shore. It was located about 10 miles from the Louisiana coast in 18 feet of water. In the mid-1950s, future president George H.W. Bush's company, Zapata Offshore, and engineer R.G. Latorno developed Scorpion, an early mobile offshore platform known as a jack-up rig that was capable of drilling at one site in water up to 80 feet deep, then moving to another site. The Scorpion rig was christened in Galveston in 1956. Because of long legs that extend to the sea floor, then raise the drill rig above the water, much like a jack raises a car, these rigs are called jack-ups. The Ocean Star is an example of an early jack-up rig. 1962 was a real turning point in the offshore oil industry, when Shell's Blue Water One rig made history as the first floating drilling platform. A Wall Street Journal article at the time reported that with this type of rig called a semi-submersible or semi, oil men can now find and produce petroleum from the open sea, regardless of depth. These rigs could be floated to a site and secured to the sea floor with anchors and mooring lines for drilling in water to 1,000 feet deep. By the 1990s, technology had advanced to enable these floating rigs to work in water depths to 5,000 feet with mooring lines stretched a mile or more in multiple directions for stability. Today, drill ships and semi-submersibles drill at water depths of more than 10,000 feet. These rigs are held in place by dynamic positioning, which employs powerful thrusters to keep the vessel in a precise location without anchoring. Just imagine, from depths where a diver could take a quick look at the bottom with one breath, Drilling has now advanced to depths so pressurized, cold, and extraordinary that it takes engineers and scientists months to plan and millions of dollars worth of sophisticated equipment to execute.
Once a company obtains mineral rights to an offshore block from the government, developing a field is a very complex endeavor. First, it must determine very specifically the best place to drill. The process begins by sending ships containing specialized seismic equipment to the location so geophysicists can map what's below the ocean floor. These ships tow listening devices called hydrophones, which record signals that bounce off the many layers of earth deep below the seabed. The returning signals give geophysicists data to enable them to create maps showing potential oil and gas formations. From these maps, the company will drill an exploratory or wildcat well. Most recent discoveries in deep water are also miles beneath the seafloor. At any water depth, rigs must often drill up to seven miles beneath the seabed before finding the target area. If the exploratory well discovers sufficient hydrocarbons, other wells are drilled nearby to determine the size and properties of the reservoir. Once sufficient data is obtained, these wells are sealed. After analysis, a production plan for the field is designed and engineered. For wells to be drilled in 400 feet of water or less, modern, more capable versions of the Ocean Star jack-up rig you're touring today are still the equipment of choice. In deep water, semis and drill ships are used. The decks of today's semis and drill ships often exceed the area of three football fields, providing enough room to house miles of drill pipe, offices, and living accommodations, derricks that tower above the main decks, and all the specialized equipment needed to enable engineers to analyze the quality of hydrocarbons in the reservoir and keep track of other vital data. Drilling from these rigs is conducted through an opening to the sea called the moon pool. After analysis of the reservoir, a production plan for the field is designed and engineered. The production plan determines how the hydrocarbons will be recovered to the ocean surface, then transported to land. Every plan must take two important concerns into account. First, can the field be produced safely? And second, have we given careful consideration to the environmental impact this development may have? For any type of platform, engineers work with geologists, marine scientists, and climatologists to determine the extremes for the region, then design facilities based on the most challenging scenarios. In waters to about 1,300 feet deep, fixed production platforms can be built. A support structure called a jacket is fabricated onshore, then towed offshore to be placed on piles driven deep into the seabed. Top sides are installed consisting of accommodations and equipment that helps pump hydrocarbons to the platform and prepares the production for export, often through pipelines connected to shore. In some extreme environments, gravity-based systems, or GBS, have been installed. These huge concrete high-tech mobile cities are built onshore, then towed offshore and ballasted to precise positions on the sea floor. They are well suited for areas exposed to seasonal ice. GBS structures operating in frigid northern climates often have iceberg shields capable of withstanding impact with a 600 million ton iceberg. In deeper water, a variety of production platforms are available. A tension leg platform, or TLP, is a structure with massive top sides on floating columns tethered to the seabed. Another type of deep water platform is a spar. The base of a spar is a huge cylindrical column, often more than half a football field in diameter and 70 stories tall, most of which is submerged to reduce motion from extreme waves. The spar is connected to the seafloor by chain and wire or synthetic rope connected to numerous mammoth piles sunk 100 feet or more into the seabed and a mile or more distant. Yet another deep water platform is a floating production storage and offloading vessel, or FPSO. These colossal vessels are fabricated at giant shipyards around the world. Many have no capacity to sail themselves and are towed to the development site. Other FPSO models are converted super tankers with 360 degree turrets housing flow lines called risers connected to subsea wells 
These vessels receive hydrocarbons from subsea wells flowing through specialized equipment on the sea floor, connected by risers to the platform. The hydrocarbons are prepared for export on the platform, where hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil can be stored before being offloaded to enormous seagoing tankers. Operators of these facilities often partner with their competitors to share the substantial cost of development, which can sometimes exceed a billion dollars to complete, most of which is spent before a single drop of oil or molecule of gas is produced. To maximize economics, multiple wells can flow back to one platform. Frequently, a production facility includes a drilling rig on the structure, allowing additional wells to be drilled during the life of the reservoir and making the development economical. Drilling technology has advanced to the point where drilling can be steered directionally, not just straight down but also horizontally and at angles and at great distances. This means that drilling from a single platform can be targeted to multiple wells that are located in the best parts of the reservoir to capture the most hydrocarbons. From a subsea well, oil and gas flows through unique equipment on the seafloor to the surface. Subsea systems are engineered to withstand the crushing pressures at extreme depths and also the frigid temperatures that affect the hydrocarbon flow and equipment at those depths. The flow lines, called risers, that connect subsea wells to platforms also weigh thousands of tons, so they have to be brought to and held near the surface by an array of floating devices, subsea buoys, and other equipment strong enough to bear the weight. Because there are many hundreds of pieces of specialized equipment used during the life of a reservoir, hundreds of service companies exist to meet these needs. These companies provide equipment and materials, such as specialized drill bits and pipe for drilling, casing and cement to stabilize the wellbore, analytical devices to know what is happening in the well and the reservoir, blowout preventers to enable rapid emergency sealing of the well, and specialized items like valves, umbilical, and subsea control devices. Remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, allow engineers to control work in water too deep for humans to survive. Fleets of special purpose vessels service offshore facilities and carry hydrocarbons to shore. Other companies provide for the needs of rig workers, offering everything from catering and housekeeping for the crews to air and sea transportation of people and goods to offshore facilities. Every offshore installation can only accomplish its goals through close teamwork with well service companies. The men and women who accept the challenges of offshore drilling and production maintain a single-minded focus on safety and the environment. Offshore safety has evolved into a science involving attitudes, behavior, extensive training, and expectations. Operators, engineers, drillers, well service personnel, marine and helicopter personnel have all established a culture of safety for their offshore work. For people in the industry, the first priority is to succeed without harming their colleagues or the environment. The Offshore Energy Center, which operates the Ocean Star, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to honoring the past and preserving the future. As you visit the museum, you'll learn more about how hydrocarbons are discovered, how wells are drilled, and how oil and gas are recovered from below the sea. In our Hall of Fame, you'll learn about pioneers of the industry and how they contributed to make the industry what it is today as well as the ever-advancing technologies that serve this industry. Most importantly, you will see how the men and women of the offshore industry recognize the risks and work to preserve this unique environment. You'll get an idea of what it's like to live on a rig, and you'll begin to understand the determination and creativity of the dedicated, innovative explorers who used cutting-edge technology to understand and tame, just a little bit, the forces of nature far out to sea to benefit each and every one of us. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoy your tour of the Ocean Star.